everything we do, we do in two planes in medicine, right? Everything is, everything is north, south, east, west. Everything is in orthogonal planes. If you get an x-ray of the lumbar spine, you get an AP and a lateral, right? If you get an MRI, you get a sagittal and an axial. If, you, uh, if you're going to study something, you study it in two planes. The reason you do that is because, so you can construct a three-dimensional image in your mind um, and then develop that into uh, your, your working um, uh, three-dimensional image of what's going on. In much the same way, ultrasound has that same north, south, east, west. Let's talk tissues. Subcutaneous tissue, the thickness depends on the structure being examined. And it usually looks relatively hypoechoic as it invests into deeper structures. And it can contain the vessels and the nerves, um, which, uh, which are superficial and, and can also invest into deeper structures. So here's some subcutaneous tissue. It can appear sort of alveolar, um, hypoechoic, with small, thin, hyperechoic bands in there. And it's at the very, very top of your screen. Muscle, if you take a cross section through muscle, it's classically described as being a starry night. And here we're, we're cross sectioned to the muscular tendon disjunction. Here's a cross section of sartorius. And if you could imagine each one of those pinpoint bright signals, they're transverse, cross section, right? This is one of, our, one of our orthogonal planes. So if I'm transverse to this muscle, Imagine each one of these beams of light coming straight at me from, from stars as I'm standing on the moon here. If I'm getting a cross section of the sartorius in much the same way, you've got um, muscle fibers coming straight at you, straight, at, straight through the screen. And those are hyperechoic. That's the paramecium and the, paramecium and the epimecium. So the paramecium and the epimecium are relatively dense, will be hyperechoic and um, will be investing through the muscle and supporting the endomecium and the actual sarcomeres themselves, which are relatively hypoechoic because they're full of fluid. And in much the same way, if you look at it in longitudinal, you can see those paramecium and epimecium um, fibers come down like this. And here's another one coming down like this. Here's another one coming down. And this whole area is, this is the vastus medialis right here, by the way. And the vastus medialis in longitudinal long axis to the, to the muscular tendonous junction, um, you're going to see those, those same um, findings. Tendon has a very similar macrostructure to muscle insofar as it has um, the same types of fibers coming straight at you, but they're much more condensed. They're bunched up like a broom. So that, if you imagine taking a kitchen broom and, and bunching it all up super, super tight, so you're looking at the end of it, and that broom, all those little tiny fibers that are, that are coming at you are, um, are going perpendicular to the plane of the, of the view here and perpendicular to the musculotendinous junction. In much the same way this tendon is right here on the top of the screen, you can see those little tiny bright dots. And a longitudinal view of the tendon will look fibrillar. It's got these fibers that are, that are going from one side of the screen to the other. Again, very much, much more dense. If you could see these bright lines, they look similar to the bright lines that were in the muscle, but much more compacted and much more dense than muscle was. 